Over the past couple weeks, I've been lucky enough to play around with the top tier Threadripper part from AMD, the 16 core 32 thread 1950X. Now there's no doubting the sheer multi-threading performance that this processor beholds and this really shines through 3D applications that don't fully support GPU acceleration and also for serious amounts of file transcoding via the CPU. One use case that is interesting though is video editing and primarily using Adobe Premiere Pro. Now I live and breathe content creation and video editing so when I get my hands on a new CPU I like to throw a few video editing benchmarks at it and see how it holds up and more importantly see how it compares to my current system and if perhaps I should make the switch. My findings so far have been pretty surprising and when it all comes down to it, it seems like a blend between high core count and fast single thread performance usually gives the best result and also that there's diminishing returns the more cores that you add. So you can probably see where this video is headed and it's safe to say that when I began benchmarking the Threadripper 1950X in Premiere Pro a few days ago, I got some pretty poor results considering the CPU's reputation as a content creation powerhouse. Since then, I've been absolutely pulling my my hair out trying to find some answers on what's going wrong and before I go any further let's start with the first benchmark that I did which is a simple 1080p export of some shadow play footage and as you can see here the results are really really surprising. Now for reference the other processors in the stack here are not high-end desktop processors like the Threadripper 1950X but yet they are significantly faster in this particular task and keep in mind that CUDA acceleration is enabled for all of this testing as it should should be. At first, I assumed this result was just straight up incorrect, and so before I went any further with the testing, I reinstalled a fresh copy of Windows 10, made sure I had the latest update, installed the latest X399 drivers, which at this point was version 18.10, and of course switched to performance mode in Windows. And although this did improve the result by a few seconds, it definitely wasn't anything significant. Task Manager still showed the CPU utilization was all over the place and barely tipped over 80% during the encoding process. Process. The next step was to see how the encoding performance was with simultaneous multi-threading disabled and just to be working with a flat 16 cores and this actually did improve the result by over a full minute. I then disabled a few cores in the BIOS to bring us down to an 8 core 16 thread chip which didn't help and then a 12 core 24 thread configuration lends us pretty much back where we were. At this point, I thought maybe it was just because we're working with a small 1080p file and the buffer sizes just aren't big enough to make use of all 32 threads. And so switching to our 4K export, we do see the Threadripper 1950X finally showing us some signs of light. Here that 4.1 gigahertz overclock is giving us a significant boost of about two minutes, but we're still pretty far behind the i7-8700K, which you can pick up for under a third of the cost. So again, disabling SMT gives us a nice boost in performance for whatever reason and improves the score by about two minutes again. And configuring the 1950X to an eight core 16 thread CPU yields a slightly worse result compared to having SMT disabled, but it's still a significant improvement from our stock result, which is just about as good as an eighth gen i5 chip. And then finally, a 12 core 24 thread configuration gives us slightly worse results than default. So a six core 8700K beating a 16 core Threadripper 1950X does not sound right at all. And I did what any sensible reviewer would do. And that was to head over to Gamers Nexus and see what sort of results they were getting. And lo and behold, the results were almost identical with the 8700K beating the 1950X with CUDA acceleration enabled. Now let's take a look at how the Threadripper part fared in other editing tasks. So let's start off with video stabilization with the warp stabilizer effect. For those who don't know, this effect stabilizes otherwise shaky footage. And it's something that I personally use a lot in my B-roll and shots with motion. Here the 1950X is trickling towards the bottom of the stack, sitting between an i7 7700K and the Ryzen 7 1700. And seeing as this task heavily relies on fast single threaded performance, it's landing right about where I expect and unfortunately, the majority of those cores are just going to waste. Let's take a look at a task that does seem to benefit from an increase in core count though, and that's video playback on the timeline. Here we've got a one minute 4K timeline open and we're seeing how many frames we're dropping when playing it back in real time. Here, I honestly thought the Threadripper CPU would easily top the stack, but Premiere Pro had other plans. 
The results show the percentage of frames dropped over the course of the one minute timeline in full resolution with anything under 15% giving us a pretty smooth experience. But as we can see, the 1950X is being beaten by its little brother, the Ryzen 7 1700. When we drop the playback resolution to half, the order of the results seemed fairly similar with the Ryzen 7 1700 taking the top score now, dropping virtually no frames at all. But the 1950X is giving us fairly average performance. And at this point, Premiere Pro is having a difficult time with all of those cores. All right, what about doing a render preview for the same timeline for some smoother playback? Here we're looking at the total time it takes to complete the one minute render. And again, pretty disappointing performance for the price that you're paying. At the end of the day, an extra few seconds is not a big deal, but when cheaper alternatives like the Ryzen 7 1700 are cutting that time in half, it does raise some questions. Performance in After Effects was pretty average as well. Here we're looking at 2D motion tracking, which heavily relies on fast single thread performance. And the Ryzen processors as a whole here don't do too well. And the 1950X is no exception, sitting right among the Ryzen 7, but this was kind of expected. And so summing up, the performance as a whole was pretty average. And in some tasks, the 1000 US dollar 1950X was beaten by the $300 7700K. Even in 4K video encoding in H.264, the Threadripper part was no better than a current generation i7, the 8700K. And so the ultimate question is, why is this happening? I was so looking forward to tearing apart some 4K footage and seeing those export times absolutely fly. And for a 16 core, 32 thread chip, you would expect nothing less. Thermal throttling was definitely out of the question, seeing as I had just upgraded to a dedicated Threadripper cooler, the Noctua U14S, and I even added in a second fan. Load temperatures in Prime 95 were pretty solid, with the 1950X overclocked to 4.1 GHz at 1.42 volts, with load temperatures just touching on 65 degrees C after 15 minutes. All testing was complete with 16 gigabytes of memory clocked to 3000 megahertz. And in terms of GPU acceleration, all systems were using a GTX 1080 Ti. So I think we can rule out other components out of the question. There was no mixing of drivers for the system either. And I made sure to give the X399 system its own boot drive with a fresh Windows 10 install, the latest drivers, and of course, fresh installations of Adobe Media Encoder, Premiere Pro, and After Effects. Now, the results in heavily single-threaded tasks like warp stabilizer and motion tracking didn't really surprise me as I knew the single core performance for the Intel processors would easily take the lead here. But for tasks like video playback and render previews, the performance is still disappointing and extremely confusing. And so by this point, I hope you can understand the title of this video. And that is if you are doing a ton of video editing work in Adobe Premiere, save your money and go with another option like an i7-8700K. Or if you simply want the best of the best, a Core i9 CPU is going to give you slightly better results as demonstrated by Gamers Nexus. The fact that I can actually disable simultaneous multi-threading on the 1950X and get a significant decrease in export times really exposes the problems that Adobe is having, delegating all of that work among the multiple threads for the Ryzen architecture and really screams lack of optimization. For those buying Threadripper CPUs, the use case definitely exists and we'll be exploring this in a future video where we look at 3D applications and other encoding scenarios where the Threadripper 1950X will truly shine. So definitely subscribe if you want to see that. As always guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.